I think both New Orleans and the Lakers wanted to kind of get out the fact that, hey, there's there's at least some activity, and the Lakers in particular wanted to say, hey, we're giving up some pretty good prospects, uh, potentially some pretty good picks too. We're negotiating in good faith. Why not uh, let Laker fans know that we're trying? As far as New Orleans, it seemed like they were trying to tamp it down a little bit. You get the feeling that they didn't want to really negotiate uh, steadily or heavily with any team, maybe kind of kick the can to the summer when they can say, all right, Knicks, Bulls, Celtics, what do you got for us? If the Lakers had a really tough game the other night in Indiana, they lost by 40-something, and that's one of their worst losses in their history. You have to wonder if maybe some of the young guys kind of got caught up in, hey, my name has been bounced around in trades the last couple weeks. Uh, maybe this is my last game with the Lakers. Now that the trade deadline is over, I expect those, those guys to kind of relax a little bit, kind of realize that, okay, I'm still a Laker. Let's uh, worry about the rest of the season, try to make the playoffs, and then, of course, try to do some damage once you get to the postseason. Yeah, I think they were pretty aggressive. It's pretty evident that the Lakers offered quite a good package for Anthony Davis, and they realized we might have to overpay a little bit, and they seemed perfectly okay with that. I mean, AD is one of the top five players in the NBA, so it made sense for the Lakers to be super aggressive. They almost have like an exclusive window with Boston unable to really negotiate leading up to the trade deadline. That's gonna change this summer. New York, Chicago, they're gonna find out what their draft picks are gonna be at the lottery towards the end of May. If one of those teams gets the top pick in the draft, Zion Williamson, if that doesn't interest New Orleans, I will be shocked. And also Boston, they have a really good chance, you know, to maybe say, hey, we're not gonna bring Kyrie back. AD, come join us. I think he's done a really good job. I mean, if you'd told me ahead of time that LeBron was gonna miss 18 games with injuries, Lonzo was gonna miss, you know, up to five, six weeks with an injury, and you have a bunch of trade rumors, a bunch of young guys on the team, a bunch of vets on one-year deals, potentially towards the end of their career, and they're still right there in the playoff hunt. I would have said, good job, Luke. He's handled himself really well. I think AD eventually will become a, a part of the Lakers. I didn't think it would happen right now. It, it seemed too short of a window. There's a chance. I mean, LeBron obviously wants to play with the guy. I don't think he's said so publicly, but I think that would be a, a pretty good tandem right there. They go way back to their, their days as uh, Olympic athletes together for Team USA. Now the Lakers have that spot and they need shooting. What can Carmelo offer them? Think about Carmelo though, will he take a spot on the bench? He wasn't real happy about coming off the bench in Houston or in OKC. He's got to realize by now, the last sequence of his career is going to be as a reserve. Uh, that's a great question. Then you got to start talking to Kawhi's representatives once uh, June 30th at 9.01 p.m. Pacific time rolls around. Then you got to start talking to Clay Thompson's people potentially. Kevin Durant, obviously, he's made some uh, bizarre comments earlier in the season about how he's not sure uh, if he wants to play with not really LeBron, the player, but all the things that accompany him, a lot of media attention. Uh, they have to make the playoffs. That's that's huge. And with the Clippers, obviously, kind of trading away some pretty good players, a borderline all-star in Tobias Harris. Clippers are kind of looking ahead to next year and the year after that. You've got the Kings that the Lakers have to kind of get over. And, and the Lakers, you don't really want to finish eighth in the West either. That's Golden State in the first round, almost surely. Fifth would be tough. That, that'd be really tough. You're going to have to vault over teams like Utah, who has a very easy schedule the rest of the way. Uh, San Antonio, very good team. It's going to be tough to get up there. I think seven would be a good thing for the Lakers. Anything but eight. You just don't want to face the Warriors right away. Although, in the Lakers' defense, just making the playoffs for the first time since 2013, that'd be a nice step in the right direction. You know, the Lakers have never been afraid to spend money. That's the key thing. If you know, It goes back to Jerry Buss when he was the, the owner of the team. He was always willing to say, hey, okay, the GM, the president of the team thinks we need to add this player. It's going to be a lengthy contract and a weighty, wealthy contract for the player. We will go ahead and make this happen. He always empowered to people around him. I think Jeannie Buss is trying to do that as the owner of the Lakers nowadays. She is letting Magic and Rob do their thing. Luke Walton is trying to coach his way through this, uh, this season. It has not been an easy one with all the injuries and all the trade rumors and everything. But I think that the Lakers always seem to land on their feet. The playoff bid is everything for this team. This team needs to make the postseason, kind of remember what it was like. It's been six years since they played past early April. The key is, though, don't finish eighth. Try not to. It's going to be tough, but you just don't want to have a, a quick uh, playoff run. You want to have a lengthy one. At least get to that second round. Try to get into May. That's something to try to look forward to. Lakers all-time starting five. I have to go with uh, Magic Johnson. I go Shaq down low. Worthy on the wing there. He can run the fast break like nobody else. Kobe in the backcourt. And then it gets really interesting. I'd probably go with... I'll we'll put Kareem down there too. We'll go with the uh, two fives. We'll go old school basketball on my Laker top five.